Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got some more spreadsheet uh, tips and tricks for you today. And today we're going to be looking at this spreadsheet that I made for a client. He is a house inspector and he wanted to see the, the total transactions that his clients uh, do in a given year and how many transactions he's actually being sent. So this isn't uh, any real data. This is just some fictitious data that I threw up there to make things a little bit fun. But uh, you can see here, James Bond maybe did, uh, maybe it was, or he, James Bond sent us two transactions out of the total five that he did. Harley Quinn didn't send us any of her transactions out of the 22. So this is a way to easily spot, uh, you know, some data from the clients that you're doing business with. And you don't need to be a house inspector to have this sheet work well for you. You can really do... Um, you know, any profession that you rely on your clients to, to make a lot of transactions. So let's say uh, maybe you're a property manager and you want to manage this person's properties. This could be a total of five units that he has. Uh, and maybe you're managing two. You know, maybe this person is has, you know, 22 units that they own and you're not managing any of them. So, of course, you would want to come and talk to this client. But we're going to go over how this sheet works and, you know, how you could also make one similar to work for you and your business or even just your everyday life. So uh, we're going to start off in column A here. We have the current rating and these ratings aren't based off of anything in the sheet. They're just uh, here to manually put in here. The client wanted to be able to manually assign different ratings and, you know, you can use whatever criteria you want to assign these ratings. But uh, this is just a way for you to assign a rating to different clients. And this is a little bit different than Excel. In Excel, this will be under data validation. But in Google Sheets, um, and just a little thought on Google Sheets. So the client wanted Google Sheets. Plus, I like Sheets because in my mind, or just uh, in my opinion, it's easier to see data uh, on your app in Google Sheets than it is through your app on your phone with Excel. It's just easier, in my opinion. Uh, if you've got you know different opinions than that, feel free to let me know in the comments. But we're going to start off for the dropdowns. So like I said, Excel uses data validation here for the dropdowns. In Sheets, we go to Insert, and here's Dropdown right here. And you can see the criteria that I have for the dropdowns. Uh, it applies to this entire range of... 2022-23 that we have, have here uh, for A3, cell A3. And if we wanted to, we can come ahead and change this to say like Z maybe and you know give it this wonky red color. Uh, it's asking me if I want to apply it to this whole column. I don't. Let's just, just this one instance. And you can see there's all wonky Z there. We'll change that back. Let's undo, 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 there, okay, and now we're back to our regular ABCD, okay, and we also see here, we've got this really, these thick lines here, and this is similar to freeze panes on Excel, uh, and in my eyes, I mean, this is a lot easier to use freeze panes in Google Sheets rather than Excel, uh, it's a lot easier just to grab these and drag them around. To me, Excel makes this a little weird. Uh, but in order to, to do this in your sheets, you can come here and press View, Freeze, and it lets you freeze the columns and freeze the rows. And it, these these selections are going to update compared to you know where you are what, what cell is highlighted in the sheet. So you can see right now I'm on row 11 with my um, the cell that's highlighted, and it'll tell me up to row 11. And if I click on that, it'll bring it all the way down so that just everything under row 11 is changing. Let's control Z that back. So yeah, let's us scroll down and still keep our headers up here. And let's us scroll to the right as well and still see our contact name and the current rating. So that's something really nice that I like to, to be able to, especially if you scroll over to the right and you're trying to get some of this other information in here and you know you, you might not be able to see contact name. This is something that I really like for, you know, to always see the contact name depending on what information that you're looking at. 
Okay, and now we see here that we have transactions uh, sent to me versus the total transactions that this client is is uh, doing. So we have two out of five, uh, and we can see that some of these rows are highlighted in blue. And the reason for that is the client wanted to know which of his clients are doing over five transactions per year. So depending on how many transactions, let's say this person's doing six, since they're doing more than five, this row is highlighting in blue. So that's a really easy way for you to quickly visualize and identify which clients that you maybe need to get in contact with. So let's control Z and undo that. And how I did that formatting was, okay, so we can go to format and conditional formatting. And we come up here, we have our field and it says A3 to O125. So A3 all the way over to O and 125 is the, the, um, the last row in this sheet. That's something to note too in sheets that's different from Excel. You can actually come and delete some of these rows. So say I wanted to delete them, then they're gone. Uh, and I, I'm trying to scroll down more and it's not letting me scroll down more. So that's something that Excel doesn't really have, at least that I know of. So let's control Z and undo that. And we'll scroll back up to the top, control up arrow, and it'll bring us up to the top. Now let's look at this um, formula that I have here in conditional formatting and how I was able to highlight this whole row. So like I said earlier, A3 to O125, it's really this entire data range. Uh, and we wanted the formatting rules to be this custom formula. So D3 greater than 5, we wanted this row to be highlighted. <clears throat> and D3 has this dollar mark here, and that really locks in that column D. So anytime there's a, a value in here that's greater than 5, this entire the entire row for that um that entire row will be highlighted. So let's come back in here, let's just say 22, even though nothing else is in these rows, it still gives us um, that highlighted column. Okay, so we're gonna undo that, and then uh, onto this, let's get rid of this, onto these dates. Uh, so this is the last time this client was contacted, let's say 9, 12, 22, and the next time we wanna contact them is 9, 6, 22. This, here and you can see how these don't have any dates on them but they do have this little dash what I did was I put an if statement in here so this formula if e8 is greater than 0 so e8 the cell if e8 is greater than 0 then we want e8 plus 14 which of course is two weeks so 14 days so but if we go ahead and just put any type of value in here let's say 22 then it will just give us a uh, plus 14 here. So you really need a date in here for it to spit out a date in this column as well. All right, but actually looking at the formula, let's go back and look at that formula. So if E7 is greater than zero, then we'll do E7 plus 14. And see, we can look at the how this function works too. The logical expression, this is the logical expression, and the value if this expression is true. But if this expression is false, we want it to spit out this dash. So that's why I have dashes in all of these because this value is uh, less than zero. If we're two, just like I did earlier, then two plus 14 is 16. So let's delete that. Okay, and then we have the company information. Uh, you know, this is just dependent on your clients. Their phone number, the email, let's scroll over. The their title within the company, the contact type, address, you know, in case you want to send them some thank you notes or something like that. And then a notes column for any type of extra notes that you want to uh, remember Remember about the client just to know, you know, in the future, maybe they like a certain type of soda, they, you know, their kid's name is such and such, whatever it might be, just to give you some more information on that client. So that's basically the entire sheet. Uh, like I said, not a whole lot of complexity here, but still a really valuable tool in order to see um, your client's information and who you need to contact from uh, the data that is showing you. So of course, you're not getting any of these um, these 22 transactions, you definitely want to contact Harley Quinn and see about getting some of this business because this is a high amount. I mean, this could be 
uh, a game changer for you and your business to be able to pick up some of these, just a fraction of the volume that she's doing. Um, but yeah, and like I said, this doesn't necessarily have to be for home inspectors in general. This could be for, you know, any type of business that is dependent upon their clients doing a lot of transactions. So that's basically enti the entire sheet. Um, if you like the video and want to see more like it, or maybe you want to see some um, some specific types of sheets, then go ahead and leave me a comment and I can uh, make some sheets for you or, you know, anything like that. And I'll be sending out more videos in the future just showing the different type of work that we're doing for some of our clients and how we can help them visualize a lot of the data. But that's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.